tonight we are welcoming Janice Shackelford and she is uh, with the Iris Society here in San Diego and I believe the National Board as well and she's going to infect you with an Iris virus which <laughs> it's really going to be um, I'm going to ha happily get it myself. She got it in the 80s after visiting Cal Dixie Iris Gar Gardens in Riverside and has been captivated ever since. So Janice, take it away. I'm going to stop my share so that you can share. Okay. And everybody it, that isn't muted, including myself, but, but everybody but the speaker um, can... Okay. Hello, everyone. Tonight, I'm going to talk about Iris for San Diego Gardens. I am a member of the San Diego Iris Society. I'm actually the treasurer and membership chair. Uh, the San Diego Iris Society is an affiliate of the American Iris Society, which was founded in 1920. Um, we are in region 15 and there are 10 clubs in our region which cover Arizona and Southern California. Um, we have a club up in Lompoc and um, three clubs in Arizona including Prescott. Um, I'm also a director for the American Iris Society and I, I recently took over the position of AIS Registrar Recorder because the AIS maintains the rhizomaceous iris registry for the entire world. So down below you can see the logo or the URLs for the uh, San Diego Iris Society and then uh, irises.org for the American Iris Society. Okay, today I'm going to talk about uh, first beardless iris, and then after a uh, response from you, bearded iris. Okay, Apagon beardless, beardless iris. All native species originate worldwide across a wide range of climates. Should be possible to find a beardless iris for any garden location, sun or shade, wet or dry, hot or cold. I'm going to talk first about crested iris, then Pacific Coast iris, Siberian, Louisiana, and Spuria. <clears throat> crested iris. This is a hybrid iris uh, cross of iris, uh, it's called Nada. It's a popular hybrid iris, iris for shady gardens. Partial shade near the coast. Spring bloom, evergreen foliage throughout the year. And a stalk sends up over 20 flowers, just like that. It blooms in succession. And next, Pacific Coast Iris, Iris Douglas Sienna. These are native to California, Oregon, and Washington. There's 12 species, nearly a thousand hybrids that have been registered and introduced. <clears throat> they require neutral or slightly acidic soil, moderate or dappled shade. Um, <clears throat> established clumps can take considerable drought, though you are encouraged to water in summer. Do not try to transplant Pacific Coast other than mid-November or December. Um, the, ry the rhizomes at that point will start developing little tiny white roots, and then you can transplant them um, once you see that. 
add gypsum or peat moss to your soil. And this is uh, uh, do not allow the rhizome to dry out when dividing. This, this is indicative of all beardless iris. Never let it dry out. And <clears throat> green foliage throughout the year and spring bloom. So this is a picture of Iris Douglas Sienna at Point Reyes and a close up over on the left. What's happening? Okay. God. Okay, this is a clump of <clears throat> Iris Douglas uh, Canyon snow in my front yard. And this is what it looks like um, in bloom, and you can see a close-up of canyon snow at, at the bottom. Uh, I also have Susie Knapp in my front yard. It is under a shade structure, so it only gets morning sun. Uh, in the <clears throat> midday, it gets filtered sun, and then in the afternoon, it's in shade. I took this picture of Banner for Iona uh, up in Washington, and they grow very nicely up there. Um, and the hybridizers have been taking the uh, flower and really developing a, a wide range of colors and petal forms. <clears throat> If you purchase a <clears throat> if you <clears throat> if you purchase a PCN, I recommend placing it in a pot for the first year in dappled shade. <clears throat> and um, a Richard Richards in our club says he he destroys many PCNs as <clears throat> as uh, he gets to survive. So if it survives then around November or December, if you want plant transplant it to your garden. <clears throat> One of our members <clears throat> in Ramona commonly keeps her PCNs in pots. However, never let the rhizome dry. <clears throat> Just a minute. <clears throat> Moving on to Iris Siberica, Siberian Iris. And they perform well in most garden soils, mildly acidic pH. Uh, though most of our water is alkaline, so use sulfur or organic materials to uh, help uh, in the acidity of your soil. A balanced fertilizer can be applied in early spring. Uh, or after bloom and use or use a soluble fertilizer such as mere acid. If you're at the coast, plant in full sun. Inland, they may require protection from the midday sun. Now, in the American Iris Society, there are sections for everything under the sun. Um, uh, at, at least 13 no, 11 sections and two cooperating societies. And for Siberians, the website is socsib.org. That's the Society for Siberian Irises. Okay, this is a picture I took of a uh, Siberian up in uh, Washington, I believe at the AIS convention. This is a picture of solar energy. Good. Um, <clears throat> this is also another picture of Judy, Judy, Judy. And the only Siberian that has ever won the winner of the American Dykes was in 2016, and that is Swans in Flight. Um, the American Dykes is 
um, awarded by the British Iris Society, but it's to Iris developed here in America or Canada. Um, and the AIS medal winners are all eligible uh, for voting by the American Iris Society judges. So this one was in 2016 and everyone voted that it was um, its winner. So if you're thinking about a Siberian iris, <clears throat> then I would suggest Caesar's brother to start with. It's very accommodating to various conditions in the garden. I currently have Caesar's brother and Jane M. Sadler established, and now I'm trying to see if Lady Vanessa and my first kiss will adapt to my garden. If you live near the coast, you may need to provide chill, i.e placing ice cubes on top of the clump when they're dormant during the winter. And you can see a picture of Caesar's brother on the left and Jane M. Sadler at the right. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> Louisiana iris. Hybrids have been developed from the five native species found in Southern states. It is the state flower of Louisiana, can be grown in ponds, slightly acidic soil, either in ground or in pots, requires moisture year round and fertilizer. Never allow it once again to dry out during transplanting. See the picture of them. Okay. <clears throat> okay, just a, minute, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Okay, why they're called Louisiana iris. <clears throat> a painting by John Audubon in 1821 of the Northern Perula Warbler. And he identified the iris. Oh, that's a Louisiana iris when he was asked. And that's actually a picture of iris fluva. Uh, even though most of the iris in the series hexagone have much wider natural ranges, that is how they are commonly identified today. Okay, these are the five species of the um, series Hexagone. Um, and this is the only true red of any of the iris species. Okay, and the hybridizers have been developing from these five species, a wide range of colors and uh, of spectrum. Let's see if this works. Okay. So you have white and yellow. Okay, orange, reds. I have no clue what I'm doing with this. <clears throat> Blues, purples. I have no clue what I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> Um, and all sorts of uh, multicolored. Okay, this was my first Louisiana iris. I received a rhizome. I put it in a pot with no drain hole in it. And next <clears throat> in the fall, and then next year it rewarded me with this nice stock of Frederick Douglass. This is how I currently grow my Louisiana irises. These are pots from Costco. Great. Okay. 
there we go. Okay. I drilled a very small drain hole in the bottom and the potting soil saturates when I water about once a week. You can also use trays or containers under the pots. Uh, one member in Ramona uses horse troughs. Just remember, never let the rhizome dry out when you divide and transplant. <clears throat> the Society for Louisiana Web Irises has a website you may go to for additional cultural information and it is louisianas.org. I don't know why this is. Okay, my, my, <clears throat> my computer is not cooperating with me. Okay, spuria. Good. Okay, spuria iris. They're hybrids from native species found throughout Europe, Spain, France to Russia. These grow very well in dry summer areas. Full sun or at least six hours of sun, good drainage. <clears throat> um, neutral or alkaline soil or lots of fertilizer. These are very easy to grow. However, they prefer not to be disturbed. They will send up stalks with six to 10 blossoms, four to six feet in height. Let's see if this works. Okay, on the left is a clump of Arafair uh, with a nicely uh, blooming in the spring. And on the right, you can see it in uh, late, late uh, autumn, early December, where it's all <clears throat> um, uh, died back, cut down. Pause it here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> On the left, you see a spuria iris, which is a rhizomaceous iris. And on the right is a Dutch iris bulbous. Uh, these are, um, <clears throat> the American Iris Society does the uh, rhizomaceous iris. And some and another country, uh, I think Netherlands does the bulbous. Okay. Okay, the hybridizers have also developed multiple colors, wide spectrum of colors. And there is a section for the Spuria Iris within the American Iris Society. Spuria Iris Society and their website is spuriairis.org. Okay, any questions on the Apagon beardless iris right now? Yes, yes. Uh, help, help. Oh, are you, can you hear the questions? Because I thought we had to put them in chat and I don't see chat. Okay. So if someone wants to ask a question that would have they to can unmute. Unmute. To mute themselves, ask the question, please. Oh, okay. I, I wonder if the the uh, spuria irises have a problem with snails because it seems with their growth habit, or maybe it was the Louisiana irises especially. It, it seems like snails and slugs would like to get in there with all that moisture. <clears throat> okay. When I plant them in pots like that, um, and that alleviates any of the slugs or snails. They, they have to crawl up. Um, 
down in Louisiana, they are down in the ground. Um, and I have no clue if they're down there. But you can also uh, handle the slugs or snails with the uh, 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 sluggo or, or I think it's um, iron, self iron, iron, whatever. <laughs> Um, there's a question in chat about our iris riparian. Um, okay, down in Louisiana, they are riparian. Up here, um, they'll if you planted them in one of the ponds along uh, a river, such as uh, the San Diego River, they might become riparian, but they would be a uh, invasive species here. So we we need treat them in pots and keep them from taking over. Yeah. Um, ode to a toad. Do you think uh -huh. that'll be for sale at the Irish plant sale? <laughs> ode to a toad. Um, and the, I took that picture. Uh, back in 2013, and the iris uh, immediately croaked afterwards. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's funny. Yeah, um, <laughs> unfortunately, most of the spuria iris, if they really like your climate, uh, they'll they'll grow a muck. Um, okay. <clears throat> but you really need to keep them isolated from growing into other um, surrounding plantings. Um, I have two clumps of here of uh, spuria iris that are growing towards one another. And then when I really want them to pull apart, I really have to go in and chop them out. Okay. Um, you said something about the bulbous being mm -hmm. in the Netherlands and the rhizomatous. Yeah, rhizomatous. Rhizomatous, thank you. Um, in the US, how does that work? Okay, the, the American Iris Society has the rhizomatous um, registry for worldwide. Oh, registry. Okay. Registry. Got it. So I, I am responsible now for um, <clears throat> taking in and recording all of the hybridizers when they develop a rhizomaceous that is new, uh, they send it to me and then I record it. And somebody is doing that in the Netherlands for the bulbous. Yes. Okay. That's a lot of cataloging. <laughs> That's a big job. Yes. Go you. It is. It is. Go you. Okay. I. That's all the I have, and okay. that's all that's in the chat. Anybody else have anything? Otherwise, we'll let. Everyone that's unmuted, including myself, mute back up. And Janice will now move on to bearded. Bearded. OK. OK. Let's see if my computer works. Eupagon, bearded iris. <clears throat> They're the most familiar iris in our area. Uh, you may have heard of grandmother's flags. Um, native species, they originated from areas of um, Southeast Asia, through Arabian to Southern Russia. Um, beginning in the 1800s, they were hybridized, uh, which continues today to create new color combinations and patterns. They require a minimum of six hours of sunlight. <clears throat> you need to water to encourage growth and flowering, but they could be drought tolerant and survive with minimal summer water. However, Avoid clay soils because the uh, rhizomes will rot and fertilize. 
Okay, these are divisions of the bearded irises. Um, they, they come in uh, six categories, uh, dependent upon height and flower form. Um, the miniature dwarf bearded, we cannot grow in San Diego County because they absolutely require chill. The standard dwarf bearded, um, I, in my garden here, I've not been able to get them to grow because they also require chill, but they do grow up in Ramona. And then everything else, IB, MTB, BB, and TB, um, should be um, uh, accommodating for all gardens down here. However, the miniature tall, um, I cannot grow. They, they're in, uh, dwarf when I get get them to to bloom. Okay. Okay. I do have crimson king. It is a rebloomer, uh, very reliable. However, you can see the falls fall, and the standards are domed. And most of and most of the hybridizers now have been uh, encouraging uh, developing wide falls that don't fall, <clears throat> ruffling, lace, and multiple patterns of uh, uh, throughout the spectrum. However, the bearded iris do not have a true red; they lack the enzyme. Okay, not a lemon. <clears throat> no, that smells like lemon. So the hybridizers have actually developed anywhere from white down to black, but they are still trying to cross and recross and recross to get a true red. This is a placata camera ready. I really like it. Okay, this is um, a no novelty iris now. It's um, uh, broken color. No two petals are alike. And it is now in a novelty section of the American Iris Society. Um, <clears throat> you see flounces. Uh, at the end of the beard, you can see some flounces that come up. So those are also uh, space age. And here we have horns uh, that are feathered. And actually the hybridizers are now developing flatties and tall beardeds. Um, the standards do not go up, they fall down. Okay. <clears throat> okay, these are the latest winners of the American Dykes Medal Mont Marte in 2017 Haunted Heart. 2018 Bottle Rocket, which is also a rebloomer in 2019. We did not have a voting in 2020 because of COVID, but then this last year um, we were doubling up. And so both of these uh, got votes 
from uh, the American Irish Society and <clears throat> received the dikes, American dikes. Okay, dividing bearded iris. <clears throat> Every three or four years, you must grow. Um, Bearded iris will grow into clumps and must be divided every three or four years. When you divide, refresh the soil by adding organic materials. Alf alfalfa pellets, they really love uh, compost, compost of manure or bags of soil, as well as a balanced fertilizer with micronutrients. I use citrus fertilizer. Another member uses rose fertilizer. And another member also has a fertilizer mix that she prepares. And her formula is on our website under Iris Info. Okay, <clears throat> this is a typical rhizomaceous iris. The mother rhizome only blooms once. However, it supports the offshoots, which are clones of itself. And you can break those off and have two new plants. So this is a, a clump of bearded iris that I will have to divide this next fall. This is a uh, bearded iris clump, and you can see the mother rhizome right in the middle. It's already bloomed. Then it sent up three or no, five offshoots around the periphery, and they also bloomed. And then they send up offshoots as well. Uh, I think I see a lot, at least 10 offshoots there. And when you plant, the rhizome must be exposed to the sun. Okay, so you really need sun on the back of the rhizome. <clears throat> iris pests. Here we do not have the iris borer. For um, it's it's back east. Here we just have aphids, mealybugs, and snails, and I think you can treat those as well as I can. Um, the iris diseases, here we have leaf spot, which is a uh, fungus. Um, the leaves, as long as they do not get tremendous amounts of, of fungus on them, survive quite nicely. However, uh, up in uh, Washington and Oregon, the fields up there are uh, really, really uh, decimated with um, the fungus on the leaf spot. <clears throat> you can also get bacterial rot of the rhizome. Um, if you have a clump that suddenly starts falling over, uh, you, li <clears throat> you lift it up and the rhizome will be really um, smelly. However, you can restore it by scraping off the bacterial rot down to the uh, flesh of the rhizome and then uh, coat it with a uh, comet cleanser with bleach and then replant it and hopefully it might survive. Okay, right now, the American Iris Society has a special offer. If you join an affiliate, which the San Diego Iris Society is, or a section or cooperating society of AIS, of which there's 13, from March 1st through June 30th, you will receive a one-year membership with AIS 
including the magazine Irises, the Bulletin of the American Iris Society. So this is a $30 value. Uh, and if you join an affiliate or a, uh, such as our club or a section like uh, Spuria, Louisiana, PCI, um, then they will, re will uh, notify AIS and that you will be able to get a free membership. And this bulletin comes out four times a year. Okay. Also, we're having a sale down in Balboa Park last weekend in April. Uh, we will have potted iris, uh, spuria, Louisiana, and arrowbreads. Um, and we will be there to answer any questions you have in addition to this um, demo um, seminar today. Okay, play, no, play from current slide, okay. Uh, so I hope this program has infected you with the vi iris virus. Any questions? I want to know about that novelty. Is it harder to grow? No, no. Really? Yeah, they, they, uh, um, the splatter matters or any of the broken color or any of the flounces or, or even uh, horns. Um, hybridizers are uh, really doing that right now. Um, and they, they have the same cultural as uh, tall beardeds. I have a question on, oops, sorry. No, go. Um, I have a question. Thank you very much for your presentation. I, I do have the iris virus. And I have a question about dividing bearded iris, the rebloomers. Can you divide those any time of year? Does it matter? Um, if you have a clump of the reblooming iris, I would suggest you only divide it halfway. Okay. And then um, put some uh, potting soil or, or whatever you want back against the, the remaining clump. That way you will get bloom in uh, the late fall or early December. Um, if you dig it up, um, you might not get the repeat bloom this year. And are there any particular ones that are especially, I have one called Marty Richards, which is a really rich purple. And I think I got it from the American Iris Society you know, plant sale probably 15 years ago. It's phenomenal. Are there mm -hmm. any others that are uh, very frequent rebloomers that do well in San Diego? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Lady Jean, uh, Crimson King. Um, I have uh, Blondie's Blush. Um, Gettysburg Sunset. Um, let's see what else. Uh, <clears throat> there's any number of rebloomers in my garden, and I could give you a list that if you uh, wanted. <clears throat> and I'm, of course, in El I'm east of El Cajon. Okay, so um, uh, let's see, buckwheat. Buckwheat is one. Um, what else? Yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head right now, but I could get you a list. That'd be That'd fabulous. Be Maybe we could post it on the website yeah. with, with the talk or something. Thank you very much. Okay, thank um, you. Janice, you mentioned the fragrance for not a lemon, that it was a lemon fragrance. Um, are all the fragrances citrusy, even if it's a purple or a red? No. 
basically the, let's see, some of the iris you do not want to be in the same room with. <laughs> okay, and they have gradations of uh, slight, uh, spicy, sweet, musky. Um, uh, that is how I record them right now. Um, some of the irises uh, do smell sweet. Some of them have uh, a lemon smell. Uh, Joseph's mantle has a root beer smell. And uh, let's see, orange popsicle has a 50-50 bar smell to it. So that's, that's what I know right now. I'm, I'm I really want not a lemon. Is that something that is common and might be at the sale in April? Okay. Um, I don't think I'll be digging that this year. Um, oh, so I, however, next however year. yeah. Um, however, I'll put it on my calendar. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, you can search any number of iris plants. If, if like, uh, not a lemon, if you go on the website, um, no, on the internet, you type in not a lemon and then followed by iris just simply iris, uh, and then hit return, um, it will come up with any number of sites uh, and gardens that you can buy that. Great. I'm, um, I love the fragrance aspect of this um, plant. And so I want to kind of stick to fragrant ones and that uh, not a lemon is the very appealing. Uh, one of the questions is, does the San Diego Iris Society still have non-potted iris for sale or is everything potted? Um, at the Springs show, everything will be potted. In September, we will have rhizomes only. That's good info. Great question. Um, and the the you have so you obviously have two sales showing sales a year. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. I I have a question. Um, Go for it. One of your slides, I thought the flower was just gorgeous, and it said uh, P Black 2010 TB, and I looked on my phone. And it looks like there's a Paul black, but the, all the photos are very deep purple. And the one in your slide, unless I got the name wrong, was like two shades of lavender, quite a bit lighter. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, how do I know which one I'm getting if I- Okay, just a minute. <clears throat> okay, and show. Okay, <clears throat> that one was act surprised. It was what? Act, A-C-T. Oh, I see. And then oh, surprised. Yes, well, that was so small, I didn't see it. Thank you very much. Are you likely to have that at your sale or do you know? Uh, no, I, no. Don't think, I don't think so. Okay, where might I get that? Do you think it would grow well in San Diego? <clears throat> All tall beardeds grow well here in San Diego. Um, about all you can do is type in act surprised and then iris on, re, on the uh, website and then hit return. And hopefully it will come up uh, with numerous gardens. Thank you very much. It says, well, we might be on Zoom, so we can question mark. I think the sound is turned off. I'm sorry, Mom, that it's such a hassle for you. Any more questions? 
It's being recorded for a second. Dennis, can, watch it mm -hmm. can I ask you of all of these irises? They're all so beautiful. So this is a bad, this is a hard question. Do you have a favorite? Orange popsicle because oh. it's it smells or like a 50-50 bar. <gasps> I want that too. Oh my gosh. Okay, thanks. Orange popsicle with my not a lemon. I don't know if it's still available yet, but it's okay. uh, hybridized by S Sutton. And he uh, uh, has moved up to Idaho. And I don't know if he still offers it. Okay. But if you type in orange popsicle and then iris, uh, someone else might, another have garden it. might uh, have it. Duper, duper. Is I, there a, a local place where I can buy irises that specializes in irises? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Too bad. Okay. Well, there's a business opportunity for somebody, I guess. <laughs> All right. I really appreciate this. I got the virus. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm, if I can, okay. I'm going to be at the, the show and sale. So and mm -hmm. if I can, I'll be buying online. Okay. Um, yeah, I would encourage you to really take up the American Iris Society offer. And if, and actually, I think I will. Yeah, actually, will. Um, if you join our club or any section, any section or cooperating society, um, and the, um, you can get their contact information when you go to irises.org and you will see affiliates or sections uh, on the American Iris Society website. Wonderful. I have one more question. Are there any particularly good uh, mail order sources that you recommend? Um, there is Mid America, Flower Fantasy, um, Sutton's. Um, uh, if you want a Tom Burstein, there's Burst Iris. <clears throat> um, uh, essentially, if you get on the uh, American Iris website, there are all sorts of gardens that are that uh, are paid or that are advertised on on the uh, website, um, and you can just click on them and figure it out. <clears throat> thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. So. If there's no more questions, I want to. Oh, hey, there's something in the comments that says, oh, you know that website, Dave's Garden website? You can go there and find irises to trade. So if you're, um, if you're um, already doing trading, on Dave's garden at all, you might uh, know how to do that. I've never done that, but uh, uh, I know people that have had real success with just generally trading plants uh, using that site. So why not with irises? Good idea. Yeah, how, however, if you get a, if you go to a, a real iris garden, you should be a, a, a you you should be uh, you will know what you are getting basically sure. Sure. you will know what you are getting yes trader beware <laughs> <laughs> yes oh gosh but 
it's it's still a for those who've done it and done it successfully uh, that's a that's a really good idea all right we have our garden tour coming up on the 26th i hope everybody's got their tickets before the tickets sell out and if you want to volunteer you need to chat up or email Karen De Leon, volunteer at sdhort.org is her is the email that goes to her. And if you are considering possibly uh, helping on the board, our meeting is on the 21st at five o'clock on Zoom and guests are welcome. And just send me an email, info at sdhort.org and I will uh, be happy to uh, send you the link and you can check us out. And we're a lot of fun. So <laughs> I hope that you'll all check us out. Um, oh, somebody said also, oh, this is great. Back to the subject at hand, that Dave's garden trading thing, they have orange popsicle. So that's why, why it was mentioned. Oh my gosh. Okay. I might learn to trade on Dave's garden. I'll report in if I do. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Janice. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Bye. Thank you.